This is Jonathan Yates. Let's talk the culture of sports. It's with Bob Culver, the county executive for Wicomico County, and Steve Miller, their director of recreation and parks. Gentlemen, thank you for taking the time today. Thank you. We appreciate you, it. Now, my family's been vacationing on the eastern shore since we moved to Maryland. And there's just something special about driving over the Bay Bridge. You know, your whole mood changes. What makes Eastern Shore so special that it can you know, make you feel so much better just crossing the bridge? We have a very relaxed atmosphere here. You know, we have a, you know, it, it will happen when it needs to happen sort of attitude. <laughs> and uh, we don't push it. It's kind of laid back. Everybody knows that when they go to Ocean City, they come through Wicomico County and they enjoy the farmland. It's, it's much more peaceful. You get to see green fields, forestry, that type of thing. Mr. Miller, what do you think it is? You're from Rhode Island, so what, yes, did you notice a change when you moved here? I did. The, the way of life, like Mr. Culver said, is just a, a pleasant a way of life here. I think people are obviously drawn to, um, to the beach and to the shore and all the different attractions that we have in this area. But I think um, we've seen over the years, you know, folks coming to, to Wicomico County for events or, or different uh, festivals and things that we run, uh, that folks like to come here, they like to come back, um, and, and we draw uh, with certain events we draw from all over the country, so uh, we feel like this is a pretty special place. Now that tells me what makes the Eastern Shore so special, but when you drive over the Vienna Bridge, there's that sign that says Wicomico County is one of the 100 best communities for young persons. What makes Wicomico County so special for young persons? We have a lot of activities, a lot of sports activities that people love to have their kids in. From soccer, we have a strong program in parks and recreation in, in Wicomico County. And uh, we realize that the kids are very important to us, and their athletics is just as important to them, so we try to push that hard. Now, coming from Rhode Island, do you agree that Wicomico County is one of the 100 best communities for young persons? Absolutely. We, we've settled here. Uh, we love it here in, on the shore. And I think, um, you know, Mr. Culver touched on it, the, the quality of life is what we emphasize in our department. Um, when you look at a community of our size, we have a Civic Center Arena, a 6,000 seat arena where we can bring in shows and concerts. Uh, we have great parks facilities. We have water for fishing. Um, it's just a, a great place to raise a family and to, to live. And so, uh, again, as far as being the, the, you know, top 100 places to, to live as far as young people go, there, there's everything here that you could want. And um, I, it's not surprising that that's the case. Now you did very well at the awards ceremony for the Maryland Department of Recreation and Parks. Can you tell us more about that? Sure. We received uh, three marketing awards. Uh, we have an internal marketing department within Recreation Parks and Tourism. They, they're fantastic. They've won awards every year, but this year we received three awards uh, as far as that goes, promoting all the different activities that we have uh, in the county. And is that helping bringing in tournaments, things like that, into the county? It's part of the picture as far as uh, our ability to market ourselves. Um, but we also have a sports marketing team mm -hmm. through our tourism department that goes out to trade shows and, and recruits event organizers to bring them here to the county. And we've, over the years, we've built up a reputation now that we're, we're operating now, though we're a small county uh, on the eastern shore of Maryland, we're operating on a national level, uh, recruiting national events to, to come play here and um, we've, we've built up a, a track record now over the years. Now who are some of the big names we would recognize? Um, so USSSA is a, is a uh, multi-sport sure. national organization but they run uh, their annual um, Eastern Shore or not Eastern Shore, Eastern World Series, Softball World Series. Um, that's grown over the years. We've, we're now going to enter our 12th year and that event started out with around 30 teams and now we're the largest girls softball tournament in the United States. Uh, right here on the shore. That's very impressive. Yeah, and that's and that's grown over years, and and we grew with the event. Um, we partner with Ocean City and Worcester County to make that happen. As far as um, being able to accommodate something of that size, you need extra hotel rooms, extra ball fields, and so we formed regional partnerships to be able to leverage not just what the county has, but what the entire uh, Lower Eastern Shore has to be able to sell these events and and bring people here. And what are the major assets that the county has that, you know, if I was head of the Wooden Bat Association for their big event, why would I want to come here? I think a big part um, is the facilities. Certainly mm -hmm. we have first class facilities that, that um, I think people like to play at. Henry Parker Complex is our premier facility. We've just invested three million dollars uh, to add additional ball fields out there in that facility. So that's a big part of it. But I think probably what sets us apart from anybody is the level of service that we can offer to these events. Um, a lot of times when you go to a certain place to, to run an event, uh, they'll give you a rental rate and they'll, they'll you know, show you to the fields and, and that's about it. But we work hand in hand with the organizers to try to create a first class experience from planning and open, opening ceremonies at our minor league stadium or at the Civic Center 
um, to the check-in process, to the off-the-field activities. We have activities in restaurants and local businesses. And we try to create an experience, a memory that, that these kids will have and their families when they come here. Uh, you know, with travel sports, it's, mm -hmm. it's often a family vacation yes. for people. So while they're playing during the day, they're looking for things to do in the evening or, or after a day off. Um, we can't beat the Eastern Shore for that. You can't. And so, and so we try to leverage all that together to create an experience. So, so the things on the field are certainly important, but their experience is much bigger than that. And, and we have great partners in, in the hotels that are part of that experience to, to really give first-class hospitality. Now, leadership like that comes from the top. Mr. Culver, how involved do you get in this process of attracting the, the big events here? Well, we have a great team that uh, mm -hmm. Steve does at Parks, Recreation, Tourism. My part is to be able to help fund it, keep it going with what we need to do, keep being able to be creative. Uh, like you said, we just spent $3 million on the Henry S. Parker ball fields, and that alone will bring us probably another tournament in here. We're looking at Little League tournaments also, so our fields that we've just created will not only do softball, but we'll also do Little League. So we're, we're trying to expand that. We're expanding anything from um, fishing tournaments, you know, which will bring a certain group sure. of people in here. So we have great fishing in the bay and in the Tangier Sound. So whatever we can do to get people to come and enjoy us, we, we do. And uh, several years ago, I used to go out to the, to the fields and watch people and talk to them and that type of thing and found out what they wanted. By doing that, I've learned what they want when they come here. And some of them have come back to vacation here and to use that as a vacation spot. So we want to become a destination. And that's my job to be able to help create those facilities for that. Is there anything they wanted that surprised you? No, they want what we do. And, and, and that's a, just the, the, the quality of life, the laid back, being able mm -hmm. to you know, enjoy the rivers, enjoy the bays, that type of thing, and enjoy the beauty that we have in Wacomico County. Now, it's obvious you're winning when it terms of bringing in the economic development with the national tournaments, but you're also into good sports. How, did, how about the first inaugural Good Sports Award banquet on January 31st? How did that go? been great and that's Steve's credit for that because he organized that and put that together but we had a great turnout and we were able to thank a lot of our volunteers and that's what's important too we don't only do this through paid we have a lot of volunteers that help us a great deal so Steve can tell you more about them what yeah. I want to hear the most is when I looked at the ads for it I saw no tickets would be sold at the door that's amazing that you had to sell out for the for the inaugural event. Yeah, we didn't know what to expect in the first year, and we had over 200 people come. And I think one of the the goals of that event, one of the successes of it, was we really tried to open up the tent as far as um, the message of good sports and sportsmanship and participation in sports for youth is such an important one. And we do our part as far as the county goes with county programs, but there are other private nonprofits that do similar things: Salvation Army, YMCA. Mm -hmm private organizations. And so that event, we invited every youth sports organization to participate because whether they play for a county program or some other program in the county, um, we feel like it's important that the message of good sports gets out there. And we were thrilled that we got the level of participation. We had 18 organizations from the county participate. I think we'll get more in the future. I think this was a first, a first time and we were thrilled with the turnout and the enthusiasm that went into that event. And we're certainly hopeful that, that the event, but also the message of good sports will continue to grow over the years. I saw that part of the good sports core values. What are they? So the core values, uh, number one is fun. Uh, we believe that kids play primarily, play sports. Um, certainly some go on to play college pro, those types of things. But primarily kids play to have fun in sports. Um, NASC just did a study, uh, National Association of Sports Commissions. They did a study and they said uh, by the age of 12, 70% of the kids that quit sports by the age of 12 uh, quit because it's not fun anymore. Right. And so to me, that's, that's just basic. It's got to be fun. So that's number one. Uh, second is we want to build community. Uh, we feel like sports is just a really unique avenue to build relationships and community uh, between coaches and players and families. It's just a unique opportunity you have in sports. Uh, thirdly, sportsmanship. We see so many negative examples of that um, when you watch television. and those yes. you, you hear the horror stories of um, bad behavior with coaches and players and those types of things. And, and we feel like a core value in playing youth sports um, is sportsmanship, is learning how to win, learning how to lose, learning how to handle yourself because um, all those things that you learn in sports, I played sports all my life, and all those things are, are principles you can apply to your life and how to handle yourself. Um, and then lastly, our fourth core value is skill development. Um, we think kids should have fun and build relationships, all those positive things, uh, but we also want them to learn. 
uh, whatever sport it is that they're playing, we feel like it's important to develop skills, fundamental skills. And so as a county, we're, we're now uh, joining a national organization to provide coaches training for our volunteer coaches. Um, many times the experience that a, a youth will have in a sport um, is largely dependent on the coach. And so we want to train our coaches and equip our coaches to be able to provide that experience. And we feel like, again, whether it's a county program or, or some other entity in the county, we want to lift up all youth in our area to be able to enjoy sports because you know I'm, I'm an example of that as far as uh, the values and the friendships and the things that I, I gained from sports over the years uh, have helped me uh, for a lifetime and we want to give that opportunity to others. That must be very rewarding for one who was an athlete to see the next generation embrace his core values. It is, it is and it's, and it's fun. We've got a great, um, we've got a great staff as Mr. Culver said. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a lot of uh, young professionals in our recreation staff who have embraced this. Uh, I've got young children uh, who are going to be involved in these programs. They've got young children involved. And so when you see the momentum and, and the, the positive energy that we got for this first time event, 200 plus people, 18 organizations, you see that start to take root and people start to rally. And, you know, it's, it's so natural for people to um, focus on the negative. And what we're trying to do our best is to, to turn the narrative and to focus on the positive. And here's, here's the value that sports can bring here's the positives that can bring, and we want to model that and certainly encourage that. And when you talk positives about the Eastern Shore, the outdoor activities are obviously huge. They're unparalleled. You have a 10-week summer camp at Pemberton Park. How active is that? That's been fantastic. We've, we've maxed that camp out the last several years. We've got great staff out there for nature camp. Uh, it's just a unique camp experience that you're not going to get. Pemberton uh, is a historical park, mm -hmm. but it's also got water and a lot of um, environmental education opportunities out there. In fact, we're actually going to be uh, uh, mod, uh, remodeling one of the rooms to try to uh, expand that program to include uh, probably 10 more children this summer. Um, that's fantastic. So, yeah, it's, it's a program that's been growing over the years, and, and it's another unique opportunity. You've got sports camps and regular, uh, regular type camps, but this environmental camp is uh, certainly unique for, for children. And how, what's it like when they experience the outdoors for the first time? Oh, I think it's great. My, my son registered for it uh, several years ago and just loved it. They got to um, look at snakes and all sorts of different creatures. <laughs> was and he allowed to bring it home? No, he was not. He would not. <laughs> Mom would not allow that to happen. But uh, no, it's fantastic. They just get exposed to different opportunities and different things. And um, it, it's just one of, the, one of the many unique opportunities we have. One of the things that through Steve's leadership we've been able to do is we'll have festivals and, and different events throughout the year. The money that we've made off those have gone to help pay for the kids to go to these camps. And, okay. and that makes it those financially challenged families that cannot afford to send their kids to mm -hmm. camp. We, we don't take that as a, as a stumbling block. We go ahead and make it available to everybody. And that's where we feel it's, you know, it's going to help the county because the children that are involved in sports or involved through camps don't seem to be your problem children either in school or on the streets so we're you know we're trying to set up for the future long term and mr colbert do you think that commitment to helping others and helping children is attracting more people to wycombe and Cook county certainly i you know i've always been a strong believer a community is judged by how it takes care of its children mm -hmm. and its elderly so we're, we're very strong in both of those categories and uh, we're very proud of that now in terms of the festivals you have i mean do the elderly enjoy the wine festival very much so. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do very well with our wine festival and our beer festival, yes. our craft beer festival. Um, uh, so, yes, they are one of the largest money makers we have during the year. So and some of those are put on the wine mm -hmm. group, put on the wine festival. But, um, but yeah, it's, it does very well for us and at the same time. It brings a lot of people to Wyconco County from all over the east, eastern coast. I mean, they come up from Carolinas and Virginia, down from Washington, D.C. to just enjoy a day. We, you know, about every third year we'll get a, a bad day, but <laughs> the other two, two weeks or two years are just fabulous. I mean, it's beautiful down here on the shore when you get a crisp fall day and, and, and you can't beat it. And what's the pumpkin tour like? I noticed that under one of the festivals. <laughs> yeah, pumpkin tour has uh, just finished its second year. And so what we do is um, at Pemberton Park, they've got a, a trail system and, and folks decorate pumpkins and mm -hmm. put them out uh, throughout the trails and we light up the trails. Um, that event started two years ago. We had about 300 people and this past year we had about 1,000 people. So mm -hmm. it's really uh, grown to be popular. I think it's going to be another one of our signature events in the fall. And we're, we're really excited. Pemberton Park is a really unique location um, for those festivals, mm -hmm. the wine and beer, but this pumpkin tour is something that uh, we're certainly excited about. And I mean, is Pemberton Park one of those unknown gyms of Maryland that people just drive past when they go to the beach? 
Well, you'd have to get off the highway to see it, mm -hmm. but it's a it's a house built by the Handy family uh, back in the 1700s, 1700s yeah. and, yeah. and uh, we've, we've, the county bought the farm and ended up you know using a lot of it still for farming operation, but we probably have 10 to 15 acres of parking there. We can probably hold a good five to 7,000 people in any one festival. Now, a friend of mine has a company which he calls the Eastern Shore Experience which puts together outdoor activities on the Eastern Shore. What would be the Eastern Shore experience in your eyes if I was to come to you, Mr. Culver? The experience? Uh, he does muskrat hunting. He does falconry. <laughs> He's been doing falconry for over 20 years. You know, the other things. What would you consider the Eastern Our Shore? Our zoo has a lot of those programs, too. Uh, muskrat hunting is a unique... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're from here, so let's yeah. hear about it. Well, muskrat hunting takes a certain type of individual. Well, I'm not, um, is that why you moved here, Mr. Miller? For muskrat, the, mus for no, the no, muskrat no, hunting? Yeah, other reasons. Well. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we find it a delicacy, so it, it is very good, but uh, you've got to acquire that taste for it. And... Uh, it's unique in the sense of how it's cooked and how people will season it, that type of thing. But just the word rat in it makes it sound, you know, most people don't want to do it, but it's not like, like a rat that you would think of. But it's, it's a unique type of hunting where you go out and trap in the marshes and that sort of thing. And um, it's not easy work. It's very tough work, uh, just as all of our watermen are. We have oyster roasts. We have mm -hmm. crab feasts. We have anything to do with seafood, rock festivals, that type of thing from our rock fishing. So we have a strong that, but we also have a strong agricultural community here with, with a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables being grown here. And it's not to mention um, Purdue Farms with our, our sure. poultry. So we have a very diverse agricultural and uh, food supply here. Now, what is the goose hunting still popular here? Does that still goose draw people from around the world? Oh, goose hunting is very popular here, all the way from Talbot County down through Somerset County. Mm -hmm. It's very, very strong, where there are a lot of tours given out, a lot of leadership done, uh, a lot of, um, how would you say, off the grid meetings are yes. done in a goose blind. Yes. So you get to sit and so talk to somebody. A lot of DC somebody. lobbyists who have goose hunting that's places true. out and, here, and that's you, for sure. You work and with duck the, hunting. And duck hunting. And, uh, so, yes, no, it's with the marshes that we have and the waterways that we have, it's a very strong uh, recreation. So, you were born here, your local town. So, the Eastern Shore experience is yeah. something you've lived. What does the Eastern Shore experience mean to you, having moved here from Rhode Island? I'll tell you, probably the thing I've enjoyed the most is uh, crab picking. That's not something I did growing up. I uh, used to clam chowder and those types of things Certainly. in New England, but um, uh, my wife kind of taught me how to pick crabs and that's been is something. Is she from this area? She is. Okay. She's from Salisbury and uh, grew up here, has, has deep roots here. and. Um, I love it here. I, I, this is home for us now. And, um, but crab picking is probably the one. And then I enjoy, I, you know, growing up in Rhode Island, that's certainly a, a beach type area. Sure. Oh, yes. Um, but I never got into different experiences like kayaking and some of the outdoor type activities that are, are very popular here. So I think that would be part of my Eastern Shore experience, too, getting out in the water and then eating crabs. Let's make this the Sophie's Choice for you. Who has better boating, Newport? Rhode Island or the Eastern Shore of Maryland? I'm going to say the Eastern Shore. I'm, I'm sitting You're here. You're in Florida County City exactly. right next to you. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you for your time. I, too, look forward to the Eastern Shore experience. Thank you for joining us. This is Jonathan Yates with the Culture of Sports.